So I'm just going to share my screen. Are you able to see the screen? <clears throat> Are you able to see the screen? Yes, sir. And is the voice clear? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. So, uh, good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to have you all here uh, to learn about education, uh, to learn about animation and how it can be used in education. And uh, animation, it's a very, very fun medium. You are all going to enjoy this. And it's going to be a very useful session also because we'll be talking about the fundamentals of animation, which will help you uh, perpetually, you know, <clears throat> because yeah, a lot of some things that we learn, they stay with us for some time and then they go. But I can assure you what you're going to learn in next two hours is going to stay with you and going to be helpful for you for a very long time. So pay attention to this and participate and enjoy. Right. Uh, before we start, I'll just give you a brief overview of what we are going to be covering. So, first of all, see, we need to understand that animation is no rocket science. Animation is something very, very basic. We have been seeing animation, but today we'll be looking at it from a slightly different angle. Right. You already know a lot of things that we'll be talking about, we'll be learning. Uh, a lot of things, as I said, you'll be knowing them already. Would uh, there might be some, uh, you know, repetition, especially for our maths and physics uh, uh, teachers who are with us. So they'll be they are requested to bear with the rest of us. And you know, we can we'll actually be uh, it will be good if we can make it a two way session where. Both of us can participate. Both of us can talk together. I wish we could all talk together, but we cannot. There is a technological uh, limitation. But you all are welcome to use the chat. Make full use of it. Please communicate with the rest of us. Tell us what you feel. If you want to ask anything, don't wait. Don't hesitate. Just please go ahead and put it on the chat. If you want to correct anything, if you want to, if you think that what I'm saying is maybe wrong or uh, can be better phrased or in any way. Please feel free to enlighten us. And it's going to be an open session. You are also free to raise hands and use the chat completely. Okay. Uh, the things that we'll be talking about in the session are these are going to be a brief animation, brief introduction. We'll be talking about why animation is required. We'll be understanding what animation is. Okay different types of animations and then we'll be covering how animation, the science of animation can be used for an educational purpose. Okay. This is going to be uh, for you very useful. And then there are different, you know, stages when we are making a film or making an animation. So we'll be taking one or maybe I think two examples if time permits us and we'll be going through it and how they were made okay we'll be taking we'll be understanding storyboarding short taking etc and then we'll continue okay now uh, before we start first let us just try and understand what we are getting into so for that i would request you all to just pay attention and watch this small two minute video which has different types of animation films they've all been put together and watch it very carefully because then we'll be referring to it uh, in the later uh, slides and we'll be talking about the things that we've seen okay so i'm just going to play it for two minutes so just pay attention and enjoy i'm sorry <clears throat> Sir, if possible, please increase the volume. Sure. Yeah.
see this might be helpful now can you see the screen yeah okay no uh, yeah yeah we can Sir, it is audible, but not very clearly. Okay. Let me, uh, there is one noise cancellation feature in Zoom. Let me see if that helps. Okay. Just one second. Okay. Just one second. See, this might, it might be helpful. Let's see. Is this better? Any better? Sir, please play again. It is still the same. I think we okay, should continue okay. with this only. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. So uh, there's just some music only and there's some dialogue. So we'll, I'll, wherever required, you know, I'll just fill in. Don't worry. Okay. So we, yeah. Hello, uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, the audio is. Uh, the that audio, is okay, no problem. Can... Audio is not required. Don't worry. No, no. Actually, the video is not. Means I think you have not presented the screen. Oh, great. You noticed. I'll just. Yeah. I'll just do that. Yeah. Now, can you see the screen? Yes. yes. Thank you. So, uh, friends. We've already played it like a couple of times. So I'm just going to go through uh, it very quickly. So first one was an example of a very basic text animation. Okay. Here we started with uh, 
you know the text itself is a character what is written and the way it is written the colors the contrast its direction its size all of those things are participating in what we are trying to see okay as you move ahead and of course there is there is a very important message and there is again the message itself is also equally important as you move ahead this one is an example of a 2d animation we'll be talking about what a 2d animation is and this uh, those of you who would have seen this very famous hindi film shole so this is a rip off of the character uh, of the villain of shole gabbar singh he has been used we have picked him up and we used it for our purpose okay so you are, you can also do such things of course there are limits and this one this film is uh, this one is a unesco film and this talks about kindness how kindness uh, spreads so when somebody does something like for example this lady just picks up someone else's trash and someone else watches it and gets inspired and does something else and so on so a small action can inspire it so that, that was the basic premise of this film this film again is a 2d film all of this is 2d but there are some parts which are 3d this one is a 3d aspect this one is a 3d scene we'll be talking about it a little more as you move ahead this is again a 2d film and this one is a 2d film but we have used a lot of lights a lot of effects lighting effects for example this these are all lighting effects that have been used they are not traditionally part of 2d but one can you know mix and match things this is an example of a photorealistic 3d animation i would request you to just watch it and then i'll tell you something very interesting about it okay just uh, 15 seconds so guys did you notice this sparrow this sparrow is actually animated can you believe that this is so real this is so real and it look it works like a real sparrow and you know similarly this squirrel is also animated all the hair everything so that is how much one can achieve with animation and see this is what it looks like in the computer's memory uh, see this uh, squirrel it looks like this uh, to the computer and then there are things added to it and it becomes like this so we'll be discussing briefly how this is done and this one is uh, this is a hyper realistic uh, animation so hyper realistic is when it is uh, realistic but everything is slightly exaggerated so when we say exaggerated it means this is uh, the reflections the jumping the gravity everything has been uh, slightly changed because this is within a film this is part of a game sequence is somebody playing a game so see so what this tells us is essentially a uh, learning point for us is that one there is a complete physics a complete world which is made in a 3d system within the computer and second that world can be tweaked to meet our requirements requirements of the story for example like i said the reflections the gravity everything has been slightly tweaked in this film okay now <clears throat> before we for, before we proceed let's just uh, talk about one second yes. sir uh, i'm so sorry to interrupt no, please, once again uh, one of the participant has written uh, we may may we see as a whole 
for that video. So, the it's your wish video. as a whole, in continuation. Uh, the entire video, once again, you want to see? One of the participants from uh, Manipur, Vidyanandji, hmm. he has okay. written in the chat okay. box. Okay. So, all of you have seen it in parts and we have taken uh, we have taken you all through it in parts also. We'll be sharing the whole video. Uh, do you? How many of you want to watch it? Tell me. We'll 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 play it after this slide. So just uh, tell me on chat how many of you want to watch the whole video. Okay. If we get a lot of numbers, we'll watch it again. Otherwise, it will be shared with you with you anyway. So if we can, yeah, you can share it later on. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kulshan. Now, let's talk about advantages of animation. Okay. Uh, advantages of animation. So, any, any inputs? Why do you think animation is required? Why do you think animation is important? Who wants to... Uh, any inputs, anyone? We have all seen animations. We have all... Some of us might have used them in schools. As a kid, we have seen... Our kids are also watching animation. What do you think is the advantage of animation? Friends, it will be really nice if you can all participate. Either you are understanding everything or you are not understanding anything. So, which one is it? Yeah, so it is better to understand. It attracts children, yes. To be very interesting. It gives wings to our imagination. It is effective for children and visualization. Perfect. It is engaging and it makes life, it makes classes very lively. So, the advantages, there are a lot of advantages of animation. Interesting and grasps the attention of the students. Yes. Yes. Any idea why, why this is, why this, this grasps the attention of the students? It makes learning effective. Students can feel practicality. It draws attention from the learners. It gets attention to the learners. Yeah. Yes. Complex things can be constructed which we can't do in real. So, in summary, we all agree the advantages of animation are 1. It lightens the mood. It makes complex subjects. It makes, you know, immediately things which may look very serious. It makes them very interesting. Right? Second, like all of us have now noticed and we've realized that it attracts attention very easily. Right? Why, does, why is that so? Why does it attract attention very easily? I think it is so because uh, it allows us to show kind of impossible things, you know, flying elephants and purple cows and, you know, yellow skies, anything we can show. So, you know, when we see something which is not usually seen, it just gets us to take notice of it. Now, this one also, as somebody has mentioned, it allows us to depict difficult to shoot topics, you know. My voice is not clear. Just one second. Mm -hmm. So I've started the noise cancellation once again. Let me know if it is any better. Is it better now? Okay. Okay. Thank you. So it allows us to depict difficult to shoot topics. Difficult to shoot topics like, you know, things like surgical procedures where it might be difficult to do it again, to repeat things, to look at things very closely. Sometimes cameras cannot be inserted in the operation theatres because of the hygiene reasons and so many other reasons. So, thank you, sir. I'm totally audible. I'm so relieved. So, <clears throat> so you know, things like where it is difficult to shoot, we can use animation. Okay. Similarly, it allows us to depict fantasy-based situations. Now, when I say fantasy-based situations, you know, things which are, so to say, in a higher reality. 
because there are things which don't exist in the yeah yeah of course we'll be sharing the ppt sir so things which are not uh, which are not existing in the real realm in the real world but you know like uh, you might have heard this picasso has said very very uh, famously picasso he has said that anything that you imagine is real and that is so true for animation anything that we imagine it exists somewhere it exists in our mind and to depict that to, to depict what we are thinking animation is a perfect medium okay so these are the advantages of animation and of course one more it allows us to show animated you know animated infographics so animated infographics are these are you know uh, when there are abstract concepts when they are when we're talking of things you know which are entirely imagined which don't exist like none of them exist physically like we are talking about five times of different financial management you know ways of management now management itself cannot be depicted five types of ways of management and then subtypes of one of those types it just gets become it becomes very abstract but as we are you know we've got we have evolved so much and we are able to imagine it to depict it we can use animation we can use abstract uh, we can use infographics uh, shapes which can be animated and it becomes diff it becomes easy for everyone to uh, arrive at the complete uh, conclusions together so these are the advantages of animation now let us talk about what do you understand by animation what animation is somebody said it enables students to visualize person and understand complex subjects yes sir exactly so tell me what do you understand by animation what exactly animation is if we were to define animation now uh, when we define something we try to uh, put it in minimum words we try to put it in minimum words which make it clear so somebody said that he is not able to see my ppt is that so who cannot see my ppt how many of you can see this clearly sir it is visible it is visible no? right right yeah. sir it must be uh, uh, mr ajit if you are not able to see the ppt please check your internet connection once it it could be a local issue okay <clears throat> okay so what do you understand by animation tell me any any inputs what animation is if you were to define animation what animation looks like like we have it is not visible to some people it this is an internet problem but you will have to bear with us because uh we'll be sharing the ppt with you later on and there will be a recording of this entire session also available to you i would request you to go through it once again okay now when we say when we say uh what we do we mean by animation it is the art to make objects move pictures in motion pictures and cartoons in motion so all of these are right but my question to you is what exactly is moving now think very carefully you are sitting in front of a screen and you see you see a cartoon character move to walk from left to right tell me what are what exactly is moving your screen has not moved your background has the background really moved mr kulshan is saying the background has moved but the background is ultimately consisting of just pixels right there is just a screen the screen is still there somebody was not looking at the screen somebody was blind and is holding the laptop would he find anything moving so my question is that yes now uh, somebody has got it perfectly right mr soibam it is the art of making objects appear to move appear is very important we are not moving anything we are only making it appear to move we are only creating an illusion okay so these are the different types of animations what do you understand by animation a lot of people say it is cartoons it is graphics it's moving pictures 
but animation is really a method in which figures are manipulated you know to appear like moving images we are only making them appear as moving images there is nothing really moving nothing okay now yes now animation and films they are based on a very interesting principle and uh, as mr as miss bonam suhela devi has got it right it is based on persistence of vision perception of vision nahi and it is persistence of vision so persistence of vision persistence of vision is i let's let's see what persistence of vision is this is the basic principle behind all animations anything anywhere moving appearing to move it is based on this so let's see what this is as our science students would know and rest of us also know that this is what our eye looks like okay this is what our eye looks like there is a lens here and there is a screen behind it which is called the retina and then there is a nerve which is going from the retina to the uh, to the brain okay now whatever comes in front of the eye it forms an image an inverted image on the retina if there is a tree there is an inverted small tree you know gets formed this image of the tree is taken to the brain the brain uh, tries to make sense of it puts it together and this thing is happening all the time from the time we started seeing when we were born till the time you know we finally close our eyes this one process is going on all the time except when we are sleeping so <laughs> thing is that uh, this image is neither permanent nor temporary why do i say this it is definitely not permanent because a new image is coming all the time but it is not temporary also it is not temporary because it stays for a very fleetingly small amount of time it stays there and then it goes now can somebody tell me what that time is what is that time period for which an image this image stays in our retina who can tell me all our science students would know this this probably in class 6 or seventh so uh i'll keep that open it's not one tenth of a second ma'am so <laughs> the image is neither permanent nor temporary so animation in simplest terms is this what we do is you know when it we show an image we show an image and the first box we show an image then we move remove it and show, show a slightly modified image we don't move it completely we don't show a completely different image but uh, we just change one thing in that image it could be its place its position its size its color anything just one small thing to be changed so when that happens and uh, ma'am as far as i know it is between 1 by 15th and 1 by 12th of a second so during that time during that time if 1 by 16th yes yes that is yeah so during that time during that 1 by 16th of the second if we are able to you know change the image and form a new image the way brain makes sense of it is that brain thinks that the th that the, that 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 object has actually moved it has moved moved from first point to the second point and as we keep repeating this process uh you know that that illusion that illusion basically continues and persists persistence of vision for you so it keeps it persists and um, that is the basic principle for seeing anything for making anything move on a stationary screen okay now there is something very interesting about animation you know so all of us consider animation to be a very very electronic a very very electronic medium there is nothing we can do 
you may you know have a lot of ideas but if there is no electricity there is nothing you can do but uh, you know you'll all be surprised to know that there is one there is one very interesting instrument which was made before uh, the television and that use animated objects right <laughs> how surprising is that so let's see what that looked like and I would request you to just watch this video very carefully and then we'll come back to it. Okay? Yeah. Here. Don't worry about sound. We'll discuss it later. So just, just watch the video. Just enjoy the video. Who can tell me what this is? Okay, so uh, sequence of pictures in different positions and comic book it seems, yes. So this is actually a, a book, you can see a thumb if you see very carefully, very carefully and who is basically, uh, somebody is just flipping these different pages. Each page is got a picture which is very close to the previous picture but just slightly removed and some one new thing is added. And this is called a flip book. And yes, Mr. Sunil, you got it perfectly right. This is called a, a flip book. And flip, book, flip books actually predate television and they predate films and uh, electronics. So how cool is that? <laughs> so, uh, and you know, this is something that all of us can make very, very easily. All you need to do is just get hold of a drawing book and start drawing and draw a lot of pictures. You know, I had one of my uh, one of my classmates used to draw small small little uh, doodles on the corners of you know very boring maths and history books, and he would just flip them and he would make those uh, stick images, math stick images move. So when kids can do it, and you know, if we start if we do it systematically, of course it is very very possible, and there's no software required for that. And no drawing sense is also required because one can just use matchstick figures. What is important is the communication. Okay. Now moving on. Let's just understand what are the different types of animations. What are the different types of animation films? Okay. Now the first type is the 2D animation. Two dimensional animation. Then there is 3D animation and then there is new media. New media are a lot of emerging technologies which are coming and uh, which are now emerging and evolving. Augmented reality and virtual reality are two of them. There are a lot many of them. So <clears throat> augmented reality is when you know uh, uh, we have all must be using Instagram. So there are all those uh, filters that you know kids are using these days with Instagram. They use augmented reality. And virtual reality is when we see something completely 360 degree, where we can move, we can move inside a world where there's no screen in front of us, it's a screen all around us. That is 3D virtual reality. <clears throat> 2D animation and 3D animation. D stands for dimension. Who can tell me what a dimension is? Our math students will have to not participate. They are not allowed to tell us because they obviously know this. For the rest of us, or if they know it, they can bear with us, you know. So, <laughs> so uh, I'll tell you what a dimension is. Yes, L into B into H. That is so right. So these are three. These are the three 
directions that you know we are constrained to stay in and x and y and z also so in terms of mathematics in terms of coordinate geometry the zero dimension is you know when there is just a point when it is just a point and there is no movement allowed we call it a zero dimensional world when there is no concept of movement only somebody we are just talking about something there is no you know there is no movement it is just a zero dimensional world when there is a movement in only one direction like a train so when somebody is you know coming from guwahati to calcutta we would just say that he is in the middle of you know guwahati and calcutta yeah i'm i'm 3 hours away from guwahati we don't have to specify in which direction it is obvious why because we are so used to imagining it as a one dimensional world so that is a one dimensional line when somebody is moving in only one direction it is a one dimensional line 2d is when it is when we have two dimensions when we can move you know like a like an ant on a table the ant can move front and back and left and right so that is a two dimensional world the way we walk we have we have access to two dimensions and 3d is when the way a, a crow flies you know when a bird is flying he has access to three all the three dimensions he can move up also down also left right also and front and back also <clears throat> so dimension essentially is the freedom of movement that an object has that is uh, dimension okay no 2d animation is when and and there is an animation film and it involves a flat character when i say flat again it means two two dimensions like a plane and it moves in a 2d on a 2d canvas on a, in a 2d world so there is no concept of depth in a 2d film everything is flat on the same surface when your characters are also flat when your uh, when your world the background is also flat it becomes a 2d canvas all the paintings that we have seen all the photographs that we have seen they are essentially 2d uh this is one film one a scene from a film that we had seen in the beginning now all of these characters this man this donkey the people who are standing the floor there is another cart behind it all of them are flat there is nothing if you were to ask me what does this horse looks like from the is there a patch on the other side of this of his neck so there is no other side this is all that you see to it right so <clears throat> now when you have everything is flat it must be very difficult to convey things but surprisingly it is not because you know we are used to conveying 3d information in a 2d surface like i said all the photographs that we have seen all the paintings that are made are also flat so what we do is when uh, you know we use again principles of compositing where things which are closer to us are made bigger this man is slightly bigger and this man is slightly shorter but if you were to ask me in terms of persist in terms of our perception they might be of the same height but because he has been placed in a way that he is at a, at a distance from us we see him slightly smaller this the other cart and the donkey they are much further away so he is much shorter things like this our eyes are trained to interpret them and that is the basic principle of compositing another example once again what is happening here is the person in closer to us the on the right he is the biggest he is the biggest why because he is closer to us he may not be very important but he is still the biggest he is just lucky so <laughs> and as we move further uh, this pool span is slightly smaller the people who are further much away they are much smaller okay so what is happening here is that again we are using the principles of compositing to convey information which is three dimensional using a two dimensional medium 
and for doing that we are making things uh, small and big we are also using some other techniques one of them is you know interaction of these different uh, objects sprites you know there's there's a word called word called sprite s p r i t e so in the animation world we use all of these are sprites you know everything that moves is a sprite so the way these sprites are interacting with each, each other we are creating a small shadow there so those shadows are also conveying this information that this is on top of it it is creating that all of them together are creating that illusion okay one more interesting thing is somebody has got disconnected but he has still been able to send a message uh, how uh, how many of you can listen to me clearly and see the screen also so you are audible and uh, your screen is also visible um, okay. the, that participant needs to reconnect so prem mr prem please try to rejoin Okay, okay. Or you can uh, install it means you can update the Zoom app which you have in your phone. So all of you, sir, if anyone gets disconnected, just quickly connect it again. It will work. And if even if you miss something, don't worry because you'll be getting the uh, recording of the session also. So uh, one of the things that we are talking about was the shadows. So the way we use shadows, they also convey the information and help us create this, this uh, help us create this illusion of who is on top of whom, and you know things like those. And one more thing which also helps us to create this illusion is, you know, you see this bird in the background, the clouds, the grass. If we could just, when we are making it, if we, you know, just imagine this bird is also moving. So it will just tell us whatever doubts we have about this being a flat that will having uh, that will all get cleared. So these are called secondary animations, background animations. The so secondary animations are also equally important. Okay. Now moving ahead, what is a three D animation? So very very uh, you know uh, obviously. So just as 2D animation involved a 2D character in a 2D world, 3D, 3D animation involves a 3D character in a 3D world. But how is a 3D character going to enter our computer and how is it going to enter our screen? Screen itself is 2D. <laughs> the answer is that computer, you know, creates a world inside it where there is a complete system of physics where there are there, there are the three dimensions and the you know everything that we see like we all know it is basically light just as we saw you know in the eye the light is forming an image so everything that we see all the colors it's basically just light falling on them changing its color and coming back to us so all that involves physics and this entire physics is created in the 3d world which the computer creates let's just see a very small film just a 30 second film and let's try to understand what a 3d animation is okay here it comes don't worry about the sound if you're not able to listen there's nothing important okay that's it very small so basically if you see very carefully this baby this boy this cartoon okay now just looking at yeah let's just see here what we are seeing is this uh, his circular face it is like is it actually a circle it is actually a sphere sphere no? like a ball and how we can see it is a ball because because of the way light is interacting with it there is a slight darkness below on the chin and below and there is brightness on the top so light is falling from the top 
So you can see very carefully and very clearly that light is interacting with the surface. This is what I said. This is what I meant when I was saying, telling you about uh, there's a complete world which gets created. Also, similarly, there's a shadow, shadow of the light. Shadow is already taking into account the light source. It is taking into account the shape of the boy. And and then there are there's interaction between the sprites also. Like if you were to consider the fa the head as a different sprite and the, ch and the rest of the body is different. So there's a shadow falling of a very small shadow of the head on the body. So all of this is possible. Why? Because computer is able to, because we are able to give this data in the computer and we are able to create a three-dimensional uh, a three-dimensional figure inside the computer and that and then after that we are able to create a lighting system we are able to tell the computer how much intensity of light we want what color the light should be what direction it should come from there are different types of lights again so all of those things are we are able to tell the computer and then that is how this is formed. Okay. And of course these things. <laughs> yeah. Moving ahead. So there are a uh, lot of so one we saw about 2D animation, 3D animation, then there are some you know some animations which are also infographic based and character based. Like we have all seen character based and you know we've seen examples of info, uh, character based animations. There is an example of infographic based animation I would just like to show you. Infographic is an abstract concept where there is nothing real but uh, you can use uh, you know you can use things which are uh, not very physical and animate them and move them to convey concepts. Let's just watch this. See, this one is still using some objects, but there are there are some animations which are totally like, for example, see, look at this. Do you see the way the way the text came? So all of these things are also conveying things. These are infographic animations. Now, <clears throat> let us talk about how to make an animation. So, animation is a it's a it's a very complex uh, process, and it is a pipeline based process. Pipeline based means we do something, then there's another uh, thing added to it, another thing added to it, like an assembly line. And a lot of times, these things are taken care of by different people because a lot of these things are specialized professions. Very broadly speaking, there are three different phases. There is a pre-production phase, there is a production phase, and there is the post-production phase. In pre-production, what happens is we figure out what we have to do, exactly where we have to go. You know, your journey doesn't start when you start your car. It starts when you start thinking about it. So pre-production is starting of the journey when the journey hasn't actually started, when you're figuring out what to do. So, And when you're working with a team, it is important that the entire team imagines the same thing. If half the people are imagining that they are going to Sikkim and half of them are imagining they are going to Calcutta, they'll end up going to Nagaland. <laughs> so, so it is important. Now, how do we make sure that the entire that the entire screen and the entire team is imagining the same thing? So there, it becomes very important to put things in writing. And that is where the first box, concept note, comes into play. We need to put into record we need to put it down in writing when we write it it becomes very precise and it can concise and then we can add and subtract and remove unnecessary things so that is a concept note 
from the concept note we come to the script script is when we add the, the, the dialogues when we are adding dialogues we need to understand uh, what kind of a character one is uh, you know this he, he, he must be a very angry character she must be a very timid character you know things like those and they become part of the script also they further lead this further leads us to character design the third box on the left side now character design is when we decide what a character is going to wear what kind of dress you know his or her height weight whether bald what kind of you know hair things like those then we arrive at screenplay for screenplay for screenplay thing is that uh, when we add when we take a script and we add camera movements to it it becomes a screenplay that is a very very basic very very uh, simple definition of screenplay is script plus camera movements is screenplay and from screenplay we arrive at storyboard storyboard is like a comic book where everything is very clearly mentioned you when you may, when you will make a if you were to make a comic book of a film you know you will have also have to decide what where we are looking at where is the camera everything is decided now <clears throat> if you have arrived at the storyboard then it means your film is ready ready for going into the production stage in the production stage for the 2d animation we start with scene design you know for example just going back slightly now in this shot we would have decided what this scene is going to look like so uh, our storyboard would have already told us what it is going to look like so we'll start with you know on the computer software we'll start with starting with the background we'll add those rocks then we'll add uh, the characters we'll add shadows, we'll add foreground characters and the secondary animations, all of those things. So those are, <clears throat> that is a scene design. There is characters which are added and secondary animations. Now in this particular uh, context, when we say animation, what we mean is the actual movement when we are adding to a character then that is called animation. Although everything that we are doing here is animation, but within that larger meaning of animation, there is a very precise meaning of animation also. That is the movements added to the characters. So when we have this entire scene is uh, ready, we started with making the background, then adding characters, then added secondary animations, the birds and grass and everything. And we added a background animation also and then we make put it all together it becomes that is called composite thing after this we this is this you have to do repeat for every scene for every single scene this process is repeated then when we have all of the, those scenes together then we come to post production post production is when those single single scenes which are then exported and they become video clips those clips are are you know put together and we create the experience that the user is going to have that process is called post-production for doing that we start with writing uh, we uh, recording the dialogues a lot of times we have to record the dialogues in uh, in a scratch when we say a scratch audio it means not the actual uh, artist is recording just so anyone is recording so that the animation can be done or just so that we can make sense of what is going to look like we may be, we may be starting with the scratch dialogue and further then we might be getting an artist to do the final recording <clears throat> editing is when all those clips are put together you would have already by now uh, learned about editing or you would be learning about it in the uh, during this course uh, sound effects are added music design is added you know sound effects and music they make a lot of difference we a lot of times we don't realize that audio sound 
is 50% of your film. You know, even like all of us, we tend to spend more time on doing video and we kind of ignore the audio. But audio is equally important. And then mastering is when the final film is move, is saved as one file and it is removed from that system for distribution, whatever the distribution could be. So this is the basic 2D animation pipeline and this is what the 3D animation pipeline looks like, I'll tell you. Let's, before that, let's just start with, let's just start with one, one uh, example. We'll come back to 3D. 3D is almost same, but this, the production part is where the difference is. We'll, we'll, coming back, we'll be coming back to it. Let's just see one example of it, okay? Now, one film that we saw was Ashwa Kumar. Ashwa Kumar is a character made for an organization that is working for uh, you know communities who uh, look after horses who have their own horses in, in houses so a lot of them are very poor they need hand holding they need help so that is where this organization helps <clears throat> so when we were to tell them about how to look after your horses we wanted to come up with a character who would be inspiring for them who would be uh, who would who they would be able to identify with them these are the basic things that one has to see who is your target audience what 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 is the ultimate purpose of that film whether it is just to make them laugh or is there an information or is there a learning or is there a behavior change you know that is so this one was a behavior change communication bcc so for BCC, we had to see that we saw different types of characters and we wanted to arrive at one character which truly would resonate with them. So, you know, all of these were shown to them and we finally took, you know, somebody's face, somebody's shoes or some added some random things. And this is one character. We arrived at that character. This was again shown to the community, a focus group, some people from the community and their inputs were taken. If there are any changes required, those changes were made. And finally, we arrived at the character. Once we did that, the next st stage was script. So let's just see what a normal script would look like. Okay, just one second. So <clears throat> this is an example of a script for an anime, animation film. And this is just one scene of that animation film. I'm just going to read out slightly and just read a few uh, lines so that we all are on the same page. It says, Khel Khel Me Samjhe Ashmo Ka Vyavhar. This is the title. Uh, this is just a description I'm going to read. एक गांव के पास एक पशु मेला लगा है जहां चारों ओर जानवर बंधे हुए हैं तमाम लोग आ जा रहे हैं कहीं लाउडस्पीकर से प्रचार चल रहा है चारों ओर लोगों और जानवरों की आवाजें आ रही हैं वहीं मेले के कोने में दो लोग बैठ के बात कर रहे हैं व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इज बेसिकली देयर इज अ इज अ एनिमल फेयर पशु मेला इन अ नियर अ विलेज ऑल अराउंड वी सी लॉट ऑफ एनिमल्स वर टाइड a lot of people are coming and going and some corner there's a loudspeaker who is uh, just you know there's some uh, some something going on in the loudspeaker there are a lot of people there are sounds of uh, animals and in one corner of the fair there are two people sitting and talking what they're talking is the first one is hasan hasan is saying kya soch mein pada hai hira यहाँ तो एक से बढ़कर एक घोड़े हैं देख ले कोई अपनी पसंद का हीरा सिंह नहीं यही तो परेशानी है हसन भाई घोड़े तो बहुत हैं, लेकिन मुझे अच्छे घोड़े की, की पहचान नहीं है 
so basically they've come here to uh, buy a horse but they are slightly uh, confused which horse to buy and then kabhi wahan hoshiyar chacha nikalte hain unki baat sunkar bol padte hain there is another third character who comes his name is hoshiyar chacha but he is a funny character <coughs> and he says kya kaha acche ghode ki pehchan ab chacha se beta ji kon bata sakta hai kyun sahi kaha na asan mia so now uh, हसन से इसकी ना भाई इनके चक्करों में मत पड़ना ये बस नाम के होशियार हैं इनके चर्चे तो तुमने सुने ही होंगे तो बेसिकली व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इज देयर आर दीज टू कैरेक्टर्स हु आर बेसिकली न्यूट्रल होशियार चाचा इज अ ही इज अ कैरेक्टर हु इज हु थिंक्स ही इज वेरी होशियार होशियार मींस ही इज वेरी ही इज वेरी इंटेलिजेंट वेरी स्मार्ट बट ही एक्चुअली इज नॉट एंड he is going to give them a a wrong uh, you know wrong uh, advice and then eventually the the hero the ashwa kumar he comes who gives who gives the correct advice now this is what the script looks like uh you might notice that some lines have been uh, highlighted they have been made italics and there are yellow Uh, highlights now those lines are descriptions it is important to mark the descriptions di- separately because when we are just writing a book you know we could just add a line here add a line there but then when that book gets converted to an animation it becomes very difficult to add you know building after that after once here half through it becomes very difficult so it is important to put it down in writing and read it many many times there are you know for this film only is a very small very basic film i remember there were 11 drafts for just the script so it is there is no problem of making redrafting your films looking at it again making changes coming back to it the more you do it better it becomes okay and also the characters have been made bold this is a very small thing that one has done but it is helpful okay <clears throat> now coming back to our presentation so we've seen what a script looks like and now let's see what a storyboard looks like so script talked about everything storyboard as you remember is like a comic book and everything that we have decided we have given uh, we have given shape to the characters we have decided what who is going to speak what what those characters are going to look like for each of like i've taken about just one character but you have you know you repeat the process for every character then you arrive at the you create a storyboard this is what the storyboard looks like you will notice that you know the first line that i uh, read out there it says a gaon ke paas ek mela laga hai jahan charo aur janwar bande hain tamam log aa ja rahe hain kahin loudspeaker mein prachar chal raha hai charo aur लोगों और जानवरों की आवाजें आ रही हैं, वहीं मेले के कोने में दो लोग बैठे बात कर रहे हैं सो ऑल ऑफ दिस इज द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द प्लेस इन एवरी सिंगल लाइन एवरी सिंगल वर्ड इज इम्पोर्टेंट देर इज नो नथिंग एक्स्ट्रा एंड येट देर इज नथिंग दैट कैन बी एडेड टू इट नथिंग कैन बी रिमूव टू इट एंड दैट इज लाइक वन कैन ऑलवेज एड स्टफ बट दिस देर हैज टू बी वन टू वन को रिलेशन बिटवीन वट यूर राइटिंग एंड वट द स्टोरी वुड लुक्स लाइक सो एज यू कैन सी now storyboard uh, may not be very clear you don't have to add too much detail to it but yet it is important that it has all the necessary detail so the sto- the loudspeaker is also covered there is this big pole and on top of the pop on top of that there is a loudspeaker there are tents there are people standing and <clears throat> you have uh, uh, you've read about different types of shots so this one is an aerial shot you are looking at it from the top so when you see this script you have to decide what is the best way of conveying this what is the most efficient way so why not use an aerial shot why not look at it from the top this arrow these arrows are used these block block arrows they are used in storyboard uh, they are used to convey c- camera movements it basically means the camera is moving from left to right okay 
एंड देन वी आर राइव एट इन द एंड यू नो द लाइन सेज वहीं एक कोने में बैठे दो लोग बात कर रहे हैं सो वी सी दिस टू पीपल स्टैंडिंग इन वन कॉर्न नाउ वी कैन नॉट यू नो फ्रॉम फ्रॉम अ टॉप एंगल एरियल शॉट वी कैन नॉट गो डायरेक्टली टू द क्लोज अप ऑफ दिस पीपल वी हैव टू गो वेरी वेरी क्लियरली अनलेस ऑफकोर्स वी वॉन्ट टू देर आर समाइम्स वेन वी आर ट्राइंग टू कन्वे शॉक और वेन वी आर ट्राइंग टू कन्वे समथिंग you know we we deliberately want to create a, a a sense of uh you know surprise then it's a different thing but otherwise normally speaking uh we we it will be better if we go close to them slowly so from this shot the third shot we come even further closer to the fourth shot which is almost a medium shot this was a long shot this is a medium shot <clears throat> and then they are talking now we could have you know made them sit facing each other also but then they wouldn't be wouldn't have been enough space for the camera so it is important that you know we have made them fa face each other at a angle around 90 degrees so that the camera also is able to look at them these are basic principles which are also used in while we are shooting a film also okay now this guy is hoshiar chacha now again uh, like i said the script has been written in a way that we don't want them to feel uh, we don't want the public to follow what he is saying so he has to look funny so that funniness has to come through in the way he is standing also the way he is speaking also all of those things and what he is speaking also okay now when they are talking to each other very closely he is saying hira bhai inke chakkar mein mat padna ye bas naam ke hoshiyar hai so this is something which these two are talking it's not for them so you know we jump to a close and there is an intercutting and eventually when ashok kumar comes now ashok kumar has to look much smarter than him much uh, you know fitter and much more uh, you know uh, leader like so these are the things which are looked after in when you are designing a storyboard okay very quickly i'm just going to tell you about it i've mentioned about shots if i could just very very quickly i know you must have read them already but for those who have not these are the different shot sizes this this is the long shot when you are seeing the entire character this the second shot is a medium long shot medium shot is further close so most of the action is happening between you know from ms mcu and cu these three is where most of your action would be happening okay there is a long shot also you can refer to the long shot you can come back this is mostly used at the beginning of the scenes and at the end of the scene big close up bcu and extreme close up xcu these are hardly used maybe in an entire you know a film of 3 hours this will probably be used just once when there's a lot of shock otherwise it is never used okay and these are the camera movements when the camera is moving from left to right it's called pan left pan right uh track out track in is when it is moving you know closer to the uh, character or away from it zoom in is when again it is moving towards the character but there is no parallax in zoom you are just the camera is standing where it is and just looking through it so these are the basic camera movements you can find them on google it is better to follow this uh, grammar when you are telling the story now coming back to it i just went there because i had mentioned these in storyboard after storyboard we come to designing the scene and we adding and adding background animations now background animations are you know things which are like things uh, birds or uh, uh, grass in the background people walking were not exactly characters even within you know even within a character also there are secondary animations secondary animation is for example when i'm talking to you my hand also gets animated my hand also moves this is not like you know lot of times 
my head rolls, my hair moves, things like those, they also have to be noticed, observed, and then added because they make the character come alive. Okay. Now, when all of these things are added, let's see what it what it looks like. Okay. So uh, we saw the script, we saw the storyboard, and then this is what uh, this is the film with scratch dialogues. Okay. Let's just watch it once. Now, as you would have noticed, the Chacha has come and the Chacha is, we have tried to make him a slightly negative character, but that is not exactly coming across. It comes across when we have the actual dialogues, which are recorded by professionals. So what happens when we have professional dialogues? This is what they look like. Now, did you notice the way the artist has said this? He has made sure that we laugh, yet we don't emulate this character. From messaging point of view, it is important that they don't take this character seriously. If they start taking this character seriously, the entire purpose of making this film goes to waste. So that is why these things are important. Okay. Now, coming, going further. Music and sound effects are added. You have already uh, attended a session by uh, Orosa, music and sound effects, and all of you are expert in that now. So, when the, in the same film, music and sound effects are added, it goes, it it takes it to a further next level. This is what it looks like. So did you notice, did you notice one music was helping us create punches, helping, helping us create, uh, 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 you know, funny movements. Also, there was sound effects in the beginning, you know, these. So those, okay, don't worry, sir, there is an audio problem. It's a technical problem. We have to bear with it. But the point basically I'm trying to make is that, uh, you know, when you get the PPT, you will be able to see the sound effects have been added. The sound effects add to the film a lot. And like I said, audio is 50% of the film, music and sound effects. And the way those dialogues are made, the way uh, music has been used in these punches, all of those things, they add to it. It is important to observe them, to notice them, to make a note of them and to be able to recreate them when you are making your own films. And finally, everything is mastered together and the film is exported. So, these things. I think something has gone wrong. Just one second, please. <clears throat> so the point we are trying to make here is that it is important to uh, understand the characters which are required, uh, the, the kind of audience that is there, 
and uh, how each character adds to it okay uh, and this is another storyboard we can go through it or you can uh, we can come back to it also let us just quickly uh, go through the 3d animation pipeline we'll come back to this if the time permits we'll we'll cover this uh, the other the second film also okay so 3d animation pipeline as you would have noticed the first part is the same the last part is the same all the changes are in the second part which is production okay now what is happening here what is happening here is there are these lot of new words the first word is modeling so for the modeling we don't get nice models to sit in front of us no modeling is when we create a 3d model of a of the object that we have to talk and we create it for the computer so inside the computer we create a 3d object we start with some basic shapes put them together the object could be organic shape which is you know uh, natural occurring shape like a human or like a dog or like a any animal or it could be an inorganic shape like a phone or a laptop or a mouse <coughs> or a table so all of those things the modeling is itself it is a fairly complex thing but modeling is the first step texturing is the next stage texturing is when we tell the computer what uh, each face of that model looks like it is not just color when we talk about texture it is one is the color one is also the way it is interacting with light for example you know uh, my hand is also brown and there could be a piece of wood also brown but the piece of wood may be you know if it is polished it will be creating a small reflection also which my hand may not be creating so things like those the way it is interacting with light whether it is absorbing light whether it is reflecting light whether it is creating reflections or uh, you know spectacular specular specular reflections are the shiny reflections that get formed you know when we see uh, something like a glass thing there are a lot of shiny reflections which get formed so things like those see for example on my phone you can see there is a shiny reflection of the tube light so this is a specular reflection my hand at the same angle is not creating that reflection so things like those when they are told to the computer is called texturing rigging is when we tell when we tell the computer how an animation now this is just before the animation okay now here i'm talking about the specific meaning of animation which is to add movements now when we add movements to a thing we need to see uh, we need to understand what are the possibilities you know uh, an arm moves at the elbow it cannot move between the elbow i cannot make it move here who is going to tell that to the computer that process is called rigging rigging is in even simpler terms it is something like giving bones to your characters basically bones are deciding what we can move what we cannot move where we can you know bend where we cannot bend that process is called rigging once rigging is done then we come to animation animation is very close to creating acting you know the way a character is walking the way he's talking the way uh, you know whether he's moving his hands or not so all of those things animators mostly are very good dancers because they are able to because they observe any artist you know the first thing is to observe observation is the most important thing if you're not observing you cannot create you cannot reproduce so animators are very good dancers and the finally then we had lighting lighting when we had we have to see you know things like what is uh, things like not just the, the color of light but also the direction from which the light is coming you know somebody standing in 
sun would be lit differently than somebody standing inside a house and within a house also uh, within an indoor building also you know the what kind of building that building that is would also have an effect on the lighting it could be an airport it would have a different kind of lighting it would be coming from much further top and it would be a very different kind of ambient lighting same lighting in a study room in a kitchen in a village kitchen would be very different in a village kitchen maybe light could be coming from bottom you know there could be a lamp on one corner so things like those all of them they add to the mood and once again one has to be observant and then finally all of these things they are put together and it is exported as one video clip and that process is called rendering when we are rendering a clip you know rendering normally is when all of these mathematical calculations which have been told to the computer calculate computer actually performs them and then it takes a lot of time for it to do that you know one second of video just one second of video has 25 different frames it is called 25 fps as a lot of you would be knowing 25 frames per second each frame in a, in a 3d film can take up to 15 to 20 minutes or 30 minutes for rendering so you know after five hours of rendering you would have just five to the ten frames just 10 frames that is less than one second of video so rendering is a very expensive process and mind you i'm talking about very very big computers like big computers computers with a lot of ram good sound cards good video cards they will take this kind of time so rendering is a process which requires good resources so it has to be managed well you cannot just decide and go ahead and render you have to first see how much time it's going to make we're going to take you to you do a test render and then you decide ki, okay this is going to work and let's just put the entire thing on rendering there are render farms also render farm is when you have a lot of computers you have 50 computers lying you know next to each other and all of them are rendering together that is a render farm there are online render farms also where you can you put your that you upload your data they render it for you and they bring it back to you now as you would have noticed all of these things they are very very specialized you know i would say professions for example an ed editor would be editing but he would be doing it for the rest of his life you know so it's a very very specialized profession he's like a super specialist an animator is again a specialist modeler modeler texturer lighting artist all of them they are professions now why if that is so then why should you be told about all of these things the answer is that you may not be doing all of these things you will you're a teacher you will be a teacher but you know you might be able to uh, you should be able to one create a small animation where all of these different roles you are able to perform using some small open source softwares and two if there is a bigger uh, bigger project that you are working on you would be probably be heading it or you would be looking at it to create uh, from uh, to you know to uh, you'll be looking at it from the application point of view so you need to you will be getting the team to work for you so it is important that you understand the capabilities of the team and you are able to pinpoint to them the changes required so that is where these different uh, professions their capabilities their names you need to understand as far as your uh, your particular uh, work most of it would be in the first box that is to figure out what the concept is what the script is what the character is going to look like arriving at a screenplay you might want to take help of a professional uh, video director or a cameraman for screenplay you might need help of a storyboard artist for making storyboard or you could always use just very simple basic matchstick figures and if you are blessed as a good artist you are welcome to create your own storyboards it will also uh, enhance your understanding of 
what are the possibilities of the film where are the problems and then those things can also help the film also okay now as we move ahead we need to see uh, sometimes you know very uh, when there are basic basic small small films when you are making you might want to create you might want to use resources from you know uh, which are freely available which you don't have to uh, start from the basic you know it is one doesn't have to invent the wheel always so when you do that you know there are a lot of free websites which are available there are a lot of free uh, there are there are a lot of free uh, websites which are available websites like uh, free pick pixels pixar ba png so from here you can download these sprites you can download you know uh, you know these characters and then you can move them so all of these are free at least for you they are free because there are limits to how much you can download but then that limits those limits you know they get updated within a day so every day you can download five to six characters you won't even be needing that many but it is important to make note of it and then those characters you know they can be used with these these are some free softwares open shot you will be learning i think today only or in the coming in the coming sessions and then there are some other free softwares also uh, you can put together these sprites make them move make them talk you know now about how to add sound and then that forms the animation there is just a few little um, concepts that i would like to tell you one is the concept of when you're downloading a thing when you're downloading a picture you should see whether it is a jpeg or a png now what happens what is the difference between the two jpeg jpeg is basically a joint photographers expert group it was a industrial group that came up with this standard of jpeg where it is basically a way to store information in a very very concise way in a computer png is also like a jpeg jpeg uses four color channels three color channels rgb red green blue png adds a fourth channel which is transparency now transparency is it tells where this picture is transparent so when you are downloading it is better when you are downloading from these websites it is better to download a png why because it won't because a jpeg would have square borders you will not be able to use it it will come with its own background you won't be able to use it and put it on front of your background so png wouldn't have a background so it is and this transparency layer it's that is what is called alpha channel okay now one more thing very interesting thing i would like to tell you very quickly is as we are closing now is the difference between jpeg and illustrator jpeg and uh, you know vector and raster what happens is basically it is about how these are basically different ways of storing the information in a computer now very very quickly raster graphics are when each pixel pixel is a picture element okay so the color of each pixel is stored in a table computer just refers to it and plays it that is what is called a raster graphics when we talk about jpegs they use this technology it is good but the disadvantage of this technology is that when you zoom into it when you zoom into it there is only a fixed amount of detail that it will have if you keep zooming into it keep zooming further 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 a time will come 
and every curved surface would appear you know uh, jagged like this on the other hand there are there's another way of storing information in the computer which is the vector graphics vector graphics is it does it in the form of a of a equation of a mathematical equation so no matter how closely you are looking at it how uh, how much you zoom it will always play that equation calculate and create a smooth graphic for you so how this is and why this is useful for us is wherever possible one should use vector graphics one should use vector graphics and one should use pngs which are which have transparencies so with these things in mind you know you you should actually please go and check out each of these websites today download some uh, some sprites from free pick you can find a lot of things from you know they are just free just download stuff and make them move make them uh, just use a software to move them you can the software you can use is open shot you would have learned today open shot can also animate some photographs also and the other rest of the software is also they are very very good this DaVinci is all this is a industry standard software a lot of films a lot of Hollywood films have been made on this and this is free it is so interesting this is free but uh, this is uh, they also sell a hardware with it so that is how they make the money but sometimes they uh, you know you don't need that hardware you can uh, you can use it on your regular computer also. Open Tunes is another software. It's a very light software. A lot of kids have also used it. And this used to be paid till some time back. Some two, three months back, it has become free. So you are, you should also explore this. And of course, PowerPoints also you can use to make films, to make animated uh, sprite and to make animated presentations. So with all this information, I hope you have understood what what are the possibilities of animation. There is, uh, before we close, I would like to show you one more film. You know, there is this, when you get the PPT, please go through this another example also. This one is another example of the storyboard. You can go through it. This is what the storyboard looks like. And this is what it uh, has created now before we stop you know I would like to just show you one more very small film that is this is just a two minute film and the good thing about is about it is that there are some cool uh, text animations that have been done so these are of course they have been done with uh, softwares like After Effects which are paid softwares which are slightly complex but you know you will at least it will just open your mind to what are the things that are possible and those same things can be created with very basic softwares also so I'll just uh, before we leave I'm just going to play that video and it's a, just a two minute video and then we can quickly take any questions you might have and then we'll close the session okay so just watch this video. Here. So, uh, these are the things that I wanted to show you. Just, just see these text graphics which are going to come now. Okay, Just check these.
Uh, so with that, if there is there any, are there, uh, is there anything you would like me to uh, elaborate upon? Anything we can discuss again? Anything that you've not understood or you want to add to anything? Or can we close the session? I think we are good to go. Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Yes, Mr. Yes. Yes, you, sir. Want to, you want to say something or you want to write something? Please unmute yourself if you want. Uh, wait, sir. I'm giving him the rights. Yes, sir. You can unmute yourself. Kulshan uh, Taiga. Yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Please go on. I just wanted to ask one thing. In that storyboard, when the two persons were talking, it was a close-up shot. So I did, couldn't get why the, their faces were not uh, about that scene, sir. Why their faces were not facing each other. And it was angle about that I want to hear, yeah. sir. Okay. So tell me. <clears throat> If they are facing each other, right? Then if the computer, if the camera was to look at them together, camera would be seeing the profile of each of them. One left side, one right side. So when we are looking at somebody from a profile side, it doesn't mean that we he's talking to us. It means that he's talking to someone else. Whereas if we rather than you know facing each other, if we just make it slightly like this. So at all the times, at least one of them would be facing us. So when this one is facing, we get profile of the other one. So, you know, it's a very, very, uh, for example, see, for example, these two people, for example, there are these two people. So we could have this kind of, uh, this kind of a uh, configuration where he is facing you. And for him, we are seeing the profile. So when he's facing you, although he's talking to you, talking to him, but you're looking at looking at, at his face and you're also seeing that someone else is looking. Okay. And for the next shot, you can just create it, change it like this. Okay, thank you, sir. So with those things you can do. Okay. And so one more question in the chat box. Uh, what is the software so that the text graphics can be created? Uh, so these graphics, will, the last set of graphics that you saw, they were made in After Effects. After Effects is a paid software, it's a industry standard software, uh, but there are ways of uh, accessing it as a as a student when you uh, download it, it is not very expensive. As a, for an educational institution also there are some, uh, you know, schemes which are available. But uh, thing is that what, what we are trying to tell, we'll, we'll be talking about a lot of, in the coming sessions you'll be learning some open source softwares. Same things can be created with those with those open source softwares also. May not be in that much detail, but uh, in a reasonably good detail. So that was just what we saw you, uh, we showed you was just an eye opener that these are the things that are, in, you know, that are possible. So don't worry about creating those kind of graphics, but even the basic graphics, they are very uh, effective. Okay. So, uh, one more query is also there, sir. Uh, does this animation e-content is appropriate for the students of higher classes? Absolutely. Absolutely, uh, ma'am. This is very, very appropriate. And in fact, uh, considering that, you know, 20 years back, the classes, the, the teachers, the everything used to be very, very blackboard based. And our, uh, our attention spans used to be also longer. But now we have got shorter attention spans. We've got access to so much of fast graphics. So the school system also has to, you know, catch up with rest of the content, which the, which the kids are getting. So absolutely not only for higher classes is even useful for uh, younger kids also. So, yeah. Okay. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much.